Welcome to part three. Let's get straight into it. Create a new folder called prefabs, since we need to make a prefab out of the enemy. Drag and drop the enemy game object into the prefabs folder and delete the enemy from the scene. Create a new empty game object called managers, and as a child of it, we create another empty game object called enemy manager. Then create a new C Sharp script called Enemy Manager and assign it to the game object with the same name. Remove the boilerplate code from the script and create a new serialized field game object enemy prefab. Then create another serialized field float for time between spawns and a private float current time between spawns. This will control how often we spawn a new enemy. Then create a transform field for enemy's parent. And using the singleton pattern, we create a static instance of the enemy manager, so it can easily be called from every other script. We will do this for all our managers in the game. Now we create the empty game object called enemies to store all spawned enemies inside of it. In the start method we set enemies parent to game object dot find enemies dot transform. Make sure the name matches the enemies game object exactly. Now in the update method, we subtract time.delta time from current time between spawns and check if it's less than zero. If so, we call the method spawn enemy and reset the timer. The spawn enemy method will be a void and inside it we instantiate the enemy prefab at a random position with quaternion.identity to ignore rotation. We create a new vector2 method to calculate the random position. For the x value, we pass random.range negative 16 to 16, and for y, we pass random.range negative 8 to 8. We call setParent on the instantiated enemy prefab to enemy's parent and make a new method to destroy all enemies. In destroy all enemies, we use a for each loop to go through all transforms in enemy's parent and destroy the game object for each one of them. Now we can assign the enemy prefab to the enemy manager script and press start. Now we can see that a lot of enemies get spawned and it begins to look more like a game. Now we will quickly fix the floor, download the floor.png, which is linked in the description, and drag and drop it into the sprites folder. Set the mesh type to full rec. And change the draw mode to tiled on the game object. Then we can set the size of the floor to whatever we want and make the color a little darker until we are happy. Perfect! Now let's create a new script called camera follow, which will make the camera follow the player when we're running around. Assign it to the main camera and remove the boilerplate code. Then add a serialized field transform target to know what to follow, and a serialized field float smooth speed if we want to configure the smoothness.
In the fixed update method, we create a new vector two called desired position and set it to vector two target position. Then another vector two called smooth position, which where we call vector three lerp and pass the vector two transform position, the desired position and the smooth speed. Then we set transform dot position of the camera to a new vector three in which we pass smooth position dot x and smooth position dot y and negative 10 for the z value. This will make the camera smoothly follow our player all the time. Assign the player to the target field of the camera follow script on the main camera. Now to make sure that we cannot run outside of the floor, we create four new Box Collider 2D on the floor game object and position them like borders to keep the player on the inside of the floor. Now the player is caught and left to his fate. The player clearly needs a couple of guns now to not be eaten by the snakes. In the next video, we will do our best to rescue him. Make sure you subscribe if you don't want the egg to be eaten just yet. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching.